and the Anzac troops, a special bond between Greece and Australia. In order to highlight this bond and promote this epic battle, to our subs subsequent generation Hellenes of Crete descent and the wider Australian community, the idea was born back in May 2011 to publish a book, a book that will contain the untold stories. The untold stories of all these Anzac veterans that gave their lives for our freedom. So the journey began with the initial announcements placed in all the veterans' journals, including Vet Affairs, The Herald Sun, The Age, and various other resources at hand to begin locating the veterans, not only in Victoria, but across the entire nation. But more importantly, the members of their families that had a story to tell. Three years in the making, and tonight we get, the, we get to see the result. This book also serve, will also serve as a means of communication and reaching out to all their beloved veterans' families. Wives, nephews, nieces, children and grandchildren. Because as time passes by, all of our Anzac veterans from the Battle of Crete will no longer be with us. Their legacy, however, will, never, will be continued and will never be forgotten. With the documentation of these stories, we say thank you to our Anzac veterans that made the ultimate sacrifice and in turn, whom paid the price and never returned home. We will remember your bravery. We will remember you for the bravery you exhibited on our parents' motherland in Crete. So tonight, in the faces of our four living veterans that have honoured us with their presence, Gordon, Leslie, Arthur and Norman, we say a very, very big thank you to you and all those that aren't with us today that risked their life for the freedom of our parents' homeland. Ladies and gentlemen, can I kindly please all ask you in, this, in, in joining me in giving these four gentlemen a standing ovation. Association of Melbourne and, the, and its president John Nicolakakis, who has sent his apologies because he couldn't be with us tonight recovering from surgery. I would like to thank the author, Ms. Dina Girolimu, who accepted our proposal to have this publication and edit the material that was gathered and presented in this book that you can see today. To our graphic artist, Ms. Paula Sadia-Davis, who spent countless hours to lay out the book and give it a historical feel. And of course, the board of management of the Pancreas Association, who didn't hesitate to decide to fund this publication and publish it. It also would be remiss of me not to also thank the President of the Cretan Federation of Australia, Mr Michael Hudalakis and his board for also contributing financially to this publication. Finally and most importantly, I thank the veterans and their families for entrusting us with their stories, the priceless photographs and very vivid memories that make up the fabric of this publication. Rest assured, we will cherish these stories for years and years to come leaving something to our children to remember you by. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tony. Our next speaker this evening is Dr. Peter Ewer, a prize-winning Australian historian and author. Dr. Ewer's doctoral thesis was on Australian aviation and defence policy in the 1930s. He has published books on the Kokoda, Changi, the bombing, the bombing of Darwin and the Forgotten Anzacs, the campaign in Greece in 1941. Please welcome Dr. Peter Hewer. Um, <coughs> thank you, Ellie, um, distinguished guests, uh, and our most distinguished uh, uh, veterans. Um, thank you all so, mu so much for coming out. Uh, the Greek people uh, had been at war since October 1940, uh, resisting the Italian aggression against their country. And as such, uh, the Greeks were the only active military ally uh, of the British Commonwealth in the dark days of the northern winter of 1940 and 1941. Um, there are a lot of uh, people with uh, American accents standing on the sideline uh, cheering us on, um, but only the Greeks were actually doing any of the fighting. Uh, and the fighting uh, uh, 
in uh, the uh, northern part of Greece on the Albanian border uh, was uh, uh, something to behold in terms of its ferocity uh, and the gallantry of the Greek army. Um, if, as uh, Tony has indicated, the Battle of Crete is something of an uh, a undeveloped story in our national consciousness, then I can assure you that the Greek resistance uh, on the Albanian front in 1940 and 1941 is a story uh, that the whole world uh, needs to know a good deal more about. Nevertheless, uh, by the evening of the 20th of May, uh, the battle hung in the balance because of a German lodgement at the Malini airfield uh, in Western Crete. Um, the uh, paratroopers uh, there succeeded in pushing the New Zealanders uh, up a hill called Hill 107, and it would be this uh, modest little uh, rise which would be uh, the decisive point of the battle. Uh, whoever held, held that hill effectively dominated the airfield and therefore the only likely uh, supply route for the Germans uh, would have been at the mercy uh, of the defenders. Um, despite uh, desperate New Zealand uh, resistance and a uh, particularly uh, gallant counter-attack by the 28th Maori Battalion of the New Zealand Division, the uh, Germans eventually prevailed, uh, not least because they resorted to the desperate measures of crash landing their uh, supply aircraft directly onto the airfield, even though it was under fire. Um, that uh, particular anecdote probably uh, uh, is a sufficient illustration uh, of the desperation and the ferocity of the fighting on Crete. Uh, with very few uh, heavy weapons, with very few heavy weapons on either side because of course paratroopers generally uh, are equipped with uh, light arms and the uh, defenders were uh, much better equipped. Um, the fighting uh, was particularly brutal and uh, bestial uh, to the extent that so much of it was of a hand-to-hand -hand variety. Um, and of course when we talk about hand-to-hand -hand combat um, it sounds uh, uh, one thing on paper to read about, but of course what it means is that you're killing a man with your bare hands. With the loss of the uh, uh, Malini airfield, the battle was effectively decided because the Germans were able to progressively fly in uh, reinforcements that weren't available to the defenders. Uh, and so there began a long withdrawal uh, from uh, uh, the Suda Bay area, across the White Mountains, uh, with little food or water, uh, to, to the tiny fishing village as it then was of uh, Svakia, which would be the principal port of embarkation for anybody who got away. Um, of course, not everybody did get away. Uh, the 7th, 7th Battalion uh, of the 6th Division in particular uh, formed the rear guard of the fighting across the White Mountains uh, to uh, protect the Svarkia uh, port uh, and uh, they, the unit uh, having discharged uh, its duty was literally standing on the quayside uh, at Svarkia uh, when the last boat left uh, and of course most of that unit went straight into uh, captivity for four long years. Um, at Heraklion, uh, the defending force was uh, largely evacuated, a uh, success. To the words I have to say to all those excellent veterans who came to Greece uh, to help our Cretans uh, for uh, fighting against the Germans. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, to give you uh, all our uh, love because uh, you left your homes. You fought in a place many kilometers, many miles away from your country, leaving your loved ones, your families, and uh, fighting together with Cretans with uh, an enemy who was really strong, stronger than us, but uh, uh, the belief for, for freedom and for uh, uh, helping uh, people who fight against those enemies 
I think it's stronger than, than anything else. I want to thank you for everything, and uh, I don't have anything else to say. I hope uh, God, uh, God gives you uh, many years uh, to live and uh, be here to uh, commemorate with us uh, those, uh, those celebrations concerning uh, the Battle of Crete. Thanks a lot for everything you have done to my country. Thank you, Raven. Next to the podium this evening is our author, Miss Dina Yerolimo. Thank you, Ellie. Dear veterans, distinguished guests, Axioti Mikhailismeni, ladies and gentlemen, and dear families of veterans. It was one winter night in 2008 when Peter Ewer was presenting his book Forgotten Anzacs at the Greek Orthodox Community of Melbourne and Victoria that I stumbled upon a piece of information which was the beginning that led me to this project, the Battle of Crete, the Untold Stories. In his presentation, Dr. Ewer mentioned the lack of formal recognition of the veterans of the Greek campaign. When I first heard that, I thought I had misunderstood. And after the presentation, I approached Dr. Yua for clarification. Dr. Yua confirmed that I had correctly, but being in a big room in the Greek community full of people was very noisy. Again, I doubted what I heard and repeated my question. But this time, I prefaced it by saying, please forgive me. English is my second language. <laughs> and I repeated <coughs> the question. Dr. Yua, being a patient man, again confirmed that no, I was not mistaken. Indeed, there has been no formal recognition in a form of a medal for the Greek campaign. That fact in combination with the fact that the Anzac Corps was formed for the second and last time in Greece in April 1941 was enough to fuel my hunger to get the story out to the public, which I did after I interviewed Frank Cox and Gordon Bill, again thanks to Dr. Yua. I specifically remember the first time I spoke to Gordon. He returned my call one evening, and we started chatting about the war and him being in Greece, where I come from, which part of Greece, whether he's been there during the war and all this, about the Germans. And at a point, I said to him something along the lines of, um, we gave them a hard time. The reaction I got has stayed with me, and it will stay with me. There was a pause at the other, at the other end of the line, and then Gordon said, yes, you did. These three words carried with them such emotion that I was awestruck by the, by the truth in them, the kind of truth that can be conveyed only by an active participant in a situation. It was at that very moment I realized to its full extent that all the facts and figures and all the information and the data and all this and that in the world cannot compare with hearing the personal stories of those who have experienced firsthand certain situations. And that's how the story began. I am concluding with the wish that the war you fought in is the last one. That the injustices war brings are not repeated ever again. So that our children's and grandchildren's stories are tales of peace, prosperity and creativity. And a very big thank you to our veterans for having defended my, con my country and my homeland. Thank you. Thank you, Dina. I'm sure you'd all agree it's very emotional to say a thank you like that. Now, to our sprightly esteemed guests, I hope you are enjoying all this attention. I would now like to welcome one of our special veterans, Mr. Gordon Beale, who will respond on behalf of our veterans. 
We are indeed privileged to have you here this evening. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm really lost in a way for words. Crete and Greece, for me, was an experience that I am very pleased that I was able to go through it. It was, in our case, a failure. We went to Greece with high hopes to help out a nation that stood up and fought and was not going to uh, easily give in to a brutal dictatorship. And uh, it was actually an education in a way. I was only 21 at the time, and uh, I hadn't been around, I had never been until I joined the army and had been uh, overseas at all, and uh, it was, I feel, the, uh, the really essence of the reason that we joined, that here was the country that was prepared to stand up against a very strong and powerful enemy who showed them no mercy. And the reason that I am so sorry and far is that I know in both Greece and Crete for the four years that followed our defeat, they suffered terribly and uh, it was a, 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 an era that uh, I hope that would never ever be repeated for them. But they were brave people on Crete. They came out, as it has been said, with picks and shovels and pitchforks and axes to defend their own homeland. And that, to me, was the essence of real brave and tremendously brave people who were up against the forces that were aligned against them. To Peter and Nina, who have spoken to me before, I thank you for the way and I'm looking forward to reading the book. I did get Peter's book quite a long time ago. I have read it and reread it. And uh, it's a great thing that over the years we have been invited back by these brave people at this time of the year, which for them brings back obviously some bitter memories of a bad time that they eventually overcame. They were in fact the only country in Europe at that time that stood and fought. And for that, they sh that should always be remembered. On behalf of uh, my colleagues here, I want to thank you for the invitation that you sent for us to be here this evening. It's a pleasure to be here and I hope that I'm still around next year, uh, but I hope... <laughs> Usually, I do not go out of a night, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm very glad that Tony 
when, he, when I first told him that I didn't go out at night, he said I had to be there and I'm very glad that he prevailed and I gave him. <laughs> Thank you ladies and gentlemen. I would like to call on President of the World Council of Cretans, Mr. Tony Sutlalakis, to make the presentations. Thank you, Julie. Um, first and foremost, I think on behalf of the Pancreas Association, I'd like to, uh, would like to uh, give the book officially to our four living veterans. So I'm going to ask um, our Federation President, Mr. Michael Lulakis, from the back to come forward and ask him to give the books to our veterans. <laughs> to Norman Maddock, from our left. To Arthur Liggett. Secretary to assist me in giving some flowers to three ladies. Firstly, to the author, uh, Ms. Dina Yerlimo. <laughs> Secondly, to our graphic artist, Paula Sagadelis. And uh, last but not least, our MC, and thank you, Ellie, for helping us today. Ellie Simons. Before I uh, leave the podium, I'd like to thank Dr. Peter Ewell for accepting our proposal to uh, present today's book. But I have your book at the time I'll give to you before you leave. Um, but I would do like to say this. I think uh, I all urge you to. Uh, read his book. Um, it's one that it certainly inspired me, and he's the first uh, of the many authors that came out and said the truth. Because truly, our veterans in Grison Creek were seriously forgotten. So, uh, Peter, thank you very much. I think it's a story well told in your book. Um, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it was very poor at one moment. The word came through for us to charge, and we tore into it. The juries were landing by parachute, and we gave them a hell of a hiding, chased them back a couple of k's, and uh, unfortunately, ten of our fellows were killed. They were retreated. We went back over White Mountain and went down to uh, Sparkia. It was in Sparkia that I tried to get away. But unfortunately, I couldn't. <laughs> what can you tell me about the people of Crete? I can tell you the people of Crete were marvellous, the way they looked after the Aussies. And there were about a dozen or so of our fellas running around on, on Crete and they looked after us and the little kids came along and brought some of the fellas food. They kept away from the houses because the Jerry's would have come in and blown the place to bits. And one particular fella that uh, Reggie Saunders, he lived there for 11 months. Another fellow lived there for just on two years before he got away. And unfortunately, a lot of our fellows out of the 
7th Battalion were taken prisoner. After the war, did you visit, visit Crete again? No. No, I no, didn't. didn't. My daughter visited Crete last year. Right here, yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you like to say anything else about the Battle of Crete? Well, it was a, way, a good way of getting stuck into the Jews because we'd been hounded out of Greece. And I think they were told by a fellow with the name of Student that was in charge of the parachutes that all you had to do was drop down and the island was yours. And it wasn't that way at all. It dropped in amongst us and the Kiwis and built a hell out of them. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Thank you very much for your um, cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. All the best. The, 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 the Battle of Crete was um, a very tough battle and always in my mind was the suffering of the, of the Greek people. I, it still upsets me what I like. What, 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 what I... What I what I seen the Germans do to the civil population it helped helped us. I seen the Germans kill kill line up the civil population and 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 with kids and old men and then ladies and just shot them dead and left them there for three days. And I've never forgotten that in my life. And um, I was one of the lucky ones. I was taken prisoner in, in, in Crete, and I finished up by escaping. And um, the German, the the um, people of Crete, they risked their lives. They were starving. And they fed us chicken legs and that. Like they were, they were wonderful people to us, and I can never forget them. Never, never, never. Did you visit Crete again since then? Yes, 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 yes. Many times. And, and, uh, and the, uh, all, all, all you got to do is say you're an Australian, and the Greek people will just want to pat you and say yeah. Australian people. Yeah. So, Wonderful people. So you got very fond memories from oh, Crete. Oh yes, very fond. Okay. Sad, fond memories and sad memories. Yeah, yeah. very fond and sad. Okay, Norm, thank you very much. That's right. All the best. Thank you. Well, we were at Retimo when the paratroopers landed. Yeah. We had been there for uh, well, nearly a month. We dug in well and in the olive groves uh, uh, surrounding or up above the airstrip at Retimo. Uh, I understand the airstrip's now a, a stretch of the main road going north and south. And uh, they dropped about 1,500 paratroopers there at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, by 9 o'clock that night, there's about 500 of them left in Paravolia. Paravolia, yes. Paravolia. Yeah. And they hang on for uh, a week. And unfortunately, the Germans won the day at the other end of the island, and the whole island capitulated. So actually, in Rethin, the Germans, they never had the upper hand? No, no, we had them bottled up. Yeah. That's right. Until they got some uh, reinforcement from Kenya, uh, from Iraq. Is yeah, that, well, is that correct? from Kenya. They, 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 they won the gay day down there. They took the aerodrome there, and of course, then they flew in everything yeah, field guns and light tanks, and we, we had nothing with three or three rifles. Anyway, it took off. It was every man for himself. It took off over the mountains and got to the other side of the island, and we hung out there for a week. But uh, we ran out of water, we ran out of food. And eventually, there's about 600 of us there, and a German officer with an interpreter walked in and he said, got machine guns up there and trench mortars up there. If you want to fight, you can have it. We said, just, just come along quietly. And he said, I'll come back in two hours' time and think, find out what you're thinking. Well, we had two hours to find out that we had nothing. And uh, we completely surrounded, so we just quietly taken into prison of war. Prison of war. Yeah. What, what happened to Ian Campbell? He got a... Uh, he, he was prisoner of war too. Oh yes, he was taken. He was he was the commanding officer of the whole show at Retimo, and uh, when uh, the island capitulated, 
he got his men together and they surrendered to the Germans. Yeah, that's what yeah. Said they yeah that was a program. But uh, he was now, quite a clever many? soldier. He no, no, we, no, 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 we were very proud of him. Uh, of course, you've been in Crete after the war many times. So. Uh, I've been back twice. Twice. Um, yeah, only twice. And that was with the Australian mission. Uh, in 2011 and 2001, so uh, I went, went back and then it was part of the Australian mission right. uh, for those commemoration services and uh, starvation. What is your message to the people of Crete? Oh, the utmost respect and adoration for them because they backed us up. Even when the paratroopers landed, they got stuck into them as well. I mean, there were civilians, but uh, they were firing shotguns and anything at, at Germans landing, and, and, uh, which, of course, is against all the rules of war, but they were into it. And then, after the island surrendered, the way they sheltered our fellows, especially up behind the monastery at Preveli, they, uh, they, the monks there looked after them for quite a while. And, uh, Naturally, our battalion in particular uh, has the utmost respect for them. Yeah. Okay, Arthur, thank you very much. No, it's always nice to talk about nice it because they're a great people. Thank you.